All right, guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. This week, we're gonna go ahead and install the Spoon Rigid Collars for the FL5. Looks like a pretty straightforward install, but you never know once we get uh, right into it, we'll see how easy it is. Let's go. All right, guys, so here's all the Rigid Collars open. These are the fronts, these are the rears, and you get a set of grease. They're like copper grease that uh, comes with each set. We got two, I'll show you uh, what we're gonna do with those ones. And of course, some instructions. Very vague, just tells you where each collar goes and they're specific. So here's a game plan. So what I did was I numbered them all off. So for the rear ones, it will go R1, R2, R3. So we got R1, two sets, R2, R3, and same with the front ones, F1, F2, F3, F4. So I'm gonna get Johnny to help me. He's gonna put the grease on or this uh, anti-seize or wherever this is on each collar while I install it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the rear ones first because that's the actual easiest one and I have the torque specs for them ready to go. I watched a couple of other vlogs, you know what they go through it all, but it's not very, very in depth. Full throttle here at our uh, vlog. We're gonna go in depth and show you guys exactly where everything goes and well, to the best I can, but uh, it, this will help you guys if you guys want to do it on your car. This will apply to all 11th gen Civics, uh, SIs, FL5, and of course the Integra Type S. Should be the exact same torque specs and rigid collars. But double check, just double check just in case I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it applies to all those cars that I just listed because it's even on the box, except the uh, Integra Type S. All right, so based on the orientation here, R1 is this one right here this is the front of the vehicle r2 is this one here and then r3 is this one here uh, i have the Cusco brace so but it's identical it's all the same so i named them off r1 r2 these ones and r3 all right guys so here's the game plan what i'm going to do is i'm going to start loosening all these uh these are all 17 mils i'm going to loosen them all out so the subframe can actually start dropping down, but you are not gonna take all the bolts out all the way. We're just gonna loosen them just enough so that it, it'll sag. All right, so when I start loosening them out, you can actually see the subframe dropping down. That's exactly what we want, but don't take the screw all the way out. We're just gonna loosen them all, all the way around evenly. And then we're gonna do one bolt at a time. All right guys, so based on the description in the uh, instructions here, R1 is over here, which is R1 I labeled earlier. So the flat, flat surface here goes towards the subframe and then the, I guess, whatever the, whatever is indent here is the bolt goes against it. So the way they had it here is uh, everything facing up is towards the bottom of the car. And this, you see there's a difference. This goes on the subframe, but I'm gonna throw it on and I'll show you exactly how it goes first. So we're gonna get Johnny to go ahead and grease it up for me right now, and then you're gonna pass it to me. So we're not gonna take all the bolts out, so it's just so that it doesn't get all uh, mixed up, but this is how it is. So the reason why they have that uh, kind of cut out on the washer, it, or on the rigid collar here, is to accommodate the washer that's on the bolts here. Fucking goof. This guy's a goof. Yeah, baby. You like that? Freaking this vlog is going to be like a 30 minute vlog because of this guy. So, okay, there we go. So the bigger side, the, the bigger where the beveled edge is facing downwards. And this goes between the subframe and the actual frame itself. Let me show them again. Okay. So the squared off and the more is upwards and then the tapered kind of like angled, hard to describe what it is, is facing downwards to the subframe. Okay. Right there. Okay, so here we go. So now we get the bolt here that Johnny already put on and we're gonna go in and he's gonna So the key to it is you have to, when we raise it back up, 
it has to go the 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 beveled edges has to go into the the holes on the hole just like me because yeah. this is really soft uh, material so if you screw up it, it's going to end up bending and be kind of permanent okay so now before i go and tighten it up and torque it up we're going to make sure everything's all lined up inside so we're going to slowly torque it all the way around so uh, let's go to the other side and do that first right back guys okay so moving on to r2 which is this one the longer one we're going to go ahead and uh Throw the collar on here so it says flat facing down and then we're going to take this one so it'll be the bigger one facing downwards so i decided to take off the uh, higher just so that i can actually show you guys a little better here and it has to sit inside there just like that like that. And then you grab the bolt. Oh. Just like that. Here, then I'll record over here a little better. And up top there, so I seat it down a little better right there. Hopefully you can see it right there. And then when we torque it back up, everything should go inside. Okay, next up we're gonna do this one here. It'll be R3. So normally, it would go like this onto this the bolt, but because I have the uh, Cusco uh, brace here, it has to go in between the subframe and the Cusco brace this direction. That's good. A little more. There you go, like that. I'm gonna have to wipe that after, okay? And then you take this one, according to the, so it'll be facing down the big beveled side. Should give you enough clearance to get in. There you go. Looks like that. Now, you're gonna get the bolt and put it right through. And then start torquing everything down. Now that we installed all the rigid collars, we're gonna start torquing it or tightening it down. So what I recommend is basically to make everything evenly. So just do it in like a star pattern, just like how you torque down uh, your set of tires. Just exactly like that. So I'm gonna do the this corner, opposite corner, and then uh, vice versa, okay? So we're just gonna, we're gonna snug them all down first. Okay, just like that. All right guys, so now I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down to 47 foot pounds. Yeah, 47 foot pounds in the same sequence again. All right, so we're ready to start the front one. The front one's actually a little more harder to do. First things first, you're gonna have to remove all the under tray, which I already did, uh, the aluminum one, and then the plastic shroud that's all the way underneath. I believe all together is like almost 30 nuts and bolts and screws and clips and all, a whole bunch of stuff all together. Pretty self-explanatory, that's really easy to do, you guys. I won't record that part. I think you guys can handle that yourself. According to the instructions, as I label them off, so F1 has two, F2 has two for each side, three, and then F4. So it'll be F1, and then F2 should be, I believe, F2, F3, and then F4 is this one here is going to go inside here okay so let's uh, get started we're going to do the exact same process again we're going to go ahead and start loosening all the bolts just to let them drop down the subframe just enough so they can sneak the collars in hopefully it should work according to plan so i went ahead and started loosening them all the bolts this one um this one this one and this one you will need to release this to let this come down so you can get access to this bolt up here uh, so all of them are 17s, except this one, this is a 19. So it's already, you see there's a gap already. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the uh, ridge collars in one by one. It's not my first time lubing something up, baby. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> this guy.
Okay, so this one, we're gonna take this one here, F, F1, and you wanna drop it in here, and it has this drop right in. So you may wanna just, here, Johnny, well, can you pull this down for me a little bit? Yeah. I know it's a little tighter. It's kinda of tight to record it. There we go. Forward, forward. There we go. See how it just dropped right in? I know it's kind of hard with the camera here, but it dropped in. Let me see if I can get a better angle for you guys here. Sorry. But it has a drop in right there. There. Okay. And with this, because I have a brace, the uh, it doesn't go on the bolt. It goes in between the brace and the... Uh, and this upframe. Just like that, and then we're gonna torque it up a little bit. Go ahead, Johnny. So much easier with two hands. And we're just gonna, not gonna tighten it all the way, just because we're gonna have it. Good, 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 because you need to drop it down to get the rest of them in. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, for F2 and F3, there's no bottoms, just the top between the subframe and the, uh, the frame itself. So just keep that in mind. So F2 is this one here, so we're gonna have to somehow snake it in here. It's gonna be a top one, but there's only one, so we'll do that right now. So this is, it looks like it's symmetrical, you guys, so there's no up and down on this one. So and again, it's just gonna drop right in there, just like that. And then we're gonna get the bolt. Okay guys, so this is a F3 which is the 19. So on this one, the bigger one goes down and the small one goes up. And we should just slide right in, just like that. And it fits nicely, just like that. So on F4, there's a top and a bottom. So the, this is the top of the top and this is facing the bottom, but like this one. We're gonna go over here, oh, sorry, in here. Okay, so for this one, you can take the when you take the bolt out, this arm will swing down. So you have to loosen this, and then I have Cusco, but you will have a factory cross member here. You have to take that off, and that was, I believe, uh, there were 14s, right, Johnny? Yeah, 14s, 14 or 15s. This one, but yeah, once you take that off, and you have access to it. Guys, okay, so this one is a little tough. I I kind of just tried it, and it's a little tight, but. We still have enough just to snake it in here. There we go. See, it just popped right in like that. Oh, bad recording, bro. Yeah, you can see it or no? Blurry. Put your hand there. Right there. So you see, how it just popped right in and it just sits flush. Make sure it, it drops down. Okay. Just like that. For the bottom one, you're facing upwards like that. But they're at what they're doing, what they're saying is this one has to go in here first and then this cross member here, like that. There. So we're just gonna put a couple of threads there and now it's all done. So one here, one here, one here, and then one here. For some reason they're saying loosen one of these, this bolt, but I didn't loosen this bolt, I left it as is. I didn't bother with that one, so. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move on to that side. We're gonna finish that up and we should be done with the install. All right guys, so we're all done putting the uh, rigid colors in. So again, I know it sounds repetitive, but we're gonna go ahead and start snugging them down, just like how you do uh, a, a tire, just so that everything moves in or up evenly all the way around. All right, so we're almost done the install. The only thing we have to do now is go ahead and torque down all the bolts. So I got my good friend Jay from Honda again. He came through clutch and gave me all the torque specs. I did look online, you guys. There's really, it's very, very vague and very, I don't know, I can't trust some of the torque specs that you find online. So straight from Honda themselves, even some of the stuff online that I found from Honda, it doesn't really explain which bolts are which or what torque specs are for what bolts. So I'm gonna go and show you guys right now so there's no confusion. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with these four here. So these are 30 foot pounds. This is uh, 69, the one in the back here. 
This one is 70 foot pounds, I believe. Yeah, 70 foot pounds. And then all the subframe ones, this 19, this 17, up here. And then this one right here are uh, 79 or 70, let me double check here, uh, 76 foot pounds. So 76, 76, and 76. And that's it. That's all I loosened. I didn't loosen this one as the per instructions. So everything is all good now. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down, you guys. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna go take this thing for a rip. I'm on the uh, road right now, and it's uh, just before the morning rush. I had a, I, kind of, I drove it yesterday, and to be honest, a lot of the biggest questions a lot of you guys are probably asking or wondering how big of a difference is it? On the average, Joe, most likely, a lot of us probably don't know what we're looking for or what we're feeling. And Johnny had the same questions like while we're in song. I didn't catch it on camera, but he's probably like, he was asking, realistically, come on, how could these little collars have any bit beneficial effects to the car's like feel? The car is just overall feedback. And what I'm thinking is, you know what? Honestly, for the average drill, like me and myself and a lot of us, a lot of enthusiasts ourselves we're not race car drivers a lot of times we do mods but we don't even know what we're looking for but it, the benefits are there it's just that we're not we just don't know what we're trying to feel or we're trying to look for it's a pretty much a support mod you just like rigid colors on its own probably won't do a whole lot but when you're adding like stiffer bushings solid bushings uh harder suspension all that combined you probably will start feeling their difference right away noticeable difference but just the rich colors on its own probably not they look cool you know it sounds cool when you say yeah my car has rich colors and stuff like that but just overall on its own you probably won't feel the difference unless you're a professional car driver or average like weekend warrior that drives all the time or knows what they're looking for or what they're trying to feel yeah for sure um, you know overall like the hashboard motor mount noticeable difference right away because you can feel it you can hear it um, but these ones unless you're putting the car to its limit on the corners and stuff you probably won't know the difference so that's pretty much it for you guys, this week's vlog you guys uh, a lot of my vlogs i try to do as much as i can in depth on the install as thorough as i can i know some of them can be a little long-winded but man myself a lot of times I, these videos help a lot you're a newbie or when you're trying to just find your way around a lot of times i don't like those videos where they're trying to show you oh i'm gonna install richie collar or honda Ad itself but they don't go in depth and telling you like especially like when i was looking for the torque specs of the bolts come on show me how to install richie collar but leave out one of the most important parts of the install is the torque specs come on so that's where in my channel, Full Throttle, we're gonna give you the in-depth insulation on every insulation. Well, the best I can. And uh, the funny thing I'll tell you, so I went and Googled torque specs on one of the forums here, and the guy says, yeah, here's the torque specs, and he puts up a sheet. It has the torque specs there, but the only problem is it doesn't tell you which bolt is which, and for a guy like me, I don't know. I don't know yet, so that's why here and help you guys if you guys enjoy the vlog don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh give me the thumbs up you guys and we'll see you guys in next week's vlog see ya i'm gonna go enjoy my car this thing this thing is like, man. solid now man solid <laughs>